Hello everyone. Today, we're going to discuss Chapter 9 of the Easy Builder Pro User Manual. In our last video, we learned how to create and use data sampling objects within Easy Builder Pro. Within this tutorial, we'll learn how to access and modify an object's properties, and we'll take a close look at specific properties that are common among most objects. Before we begin, be sure to check out the description below for quick links to different topics discussed within this video as well as a link to our website. And don't forget to subscribe to receive updates on the latest videos within this series. Let's get started by opening an instance of Easy Builder Pro. The project on my display has been configured such that the HMI will be able to communicate with a Modbus device. To add an object, we can use the Object drop-down list within the Home tab, or we can select objects directly from the Object tab. When we select an object, like a bit lamp, our Object's Properties menu will open, and within this menu, for most objects, you'll notice several tabs at the top. The menu of our bit lamp is a good example because many of the tabs that you see here are common among most objects. Now before I explain the purpose of each tab, I'd like to note that there are a few basic steps that you should follow when creating an object. Step 1 is to define the read or write address of the HMI or PLC that this object will reference. Step 2 is to select the object's picture or shape. Step 3 is to configure the object's font or label settings. And Step 4 is to place this object and define its size. In order to address an object to an external device, you'll need to add the driver for that device within the system parameters. The system parameters can be accessed within the Home tab. For most objects, the read and write address can be configured within the General tab, which can be found within the Objects Properties menu. To address this bit lamp to a register within my Modbus device, I'll select the Device drop-down list and choose my Modbus TCP IP device. Next, within the Address or Address Type drop-down list and Text box, we can specify the location within PLC memory that this object will reference. In some applications, it may be necessary to modify an HMI system tag, access a user-defined tag, or assign an index register as well. To access any of these properties, we'll need to select the Settings button on the right side. Within earlier versions of our software, the Settings button was labeled Settings. However, within the current version, the Settings button now depicts a tag with an orange dot. I'll select this button, and within the following menu, we can access our system tags by specifying the device as our local HMI. With that configured, I'll select the System Tag checkbox below, which will allow us to quickly search for and access system tags applicable to our device that write to or read from certain internal functions within the HMI. User-defined tags are configured within the address library or by selecting the Add Tag button, which is a small button that depicts a tag with a green plus next to the Settings button. By default, certain user-defined tags have been configured for specific PLW registers which is why the User Defined Tag checkbox is accessible when our local HMI is selected. However, had we configured a tag for our Modbus device by using the methods previously described, this checkbox would be available when our Modbus device is selected as well. To assign an index register to the address within this object, we'll need to enable our Index Register checkbox and select an index register from the drop-down list. For more information on applications that involve system tags, user-defined tags, or index registers, please refer to the Easy Builder Pro user manual. Now that we've configured the address of our bitlamp, let's define the shape or picture that our bitlamp will display. To do this, we'll select the Shape tab, where at the top we can select the State drop-down list to view the image associated with each state. We can also preview a limited number of states by selecting the numeric icons shown below the preview. While Use Picture is selected, we can choose a system or custom image from our extensive picture library. Once we find or design an appropriate image, we'll select it and then click OK to close our library. 
and the preview shown will reflect our new image. Certain system images allow the user to change the color of the object depending on the object state. For example, by using the color drop-down list, I can change the color of the image associated with state 0 to red, and the color of the image on state 1 to green. However, not all images support this feature. The option that we have yet to discuss is the Adjust Object Size to Picture's Original Dimension checkbox. And as its name implies, if the proportions of this object have been changed, and you would like to revert the image to the original dimensions of the picture, you can do so by enabling this feature. Now, underneath the Picture Group box is our Shape Group box, in which, by enabling Use Shape, we can select and use a shape from our Shape Library. The Shape Library, by default, is not as extensive as our Picture Library, but there are some library files that can be found within the Easy Builder Pro installation directory, and it is also possible and quite easy to create your own custom shapes by using our Draw Tools. Below the Shape Library button, you'll notice that we can configure the inner and outer colors of the shape, and even select an inner pattern. However, these options are only available when using a system frame. Before we move on, I'd like to mention that while using either a system image or a system frame, you'll also notice that we have an additional button that will allow us to duplicate the selected attributes to every state. With our image set, let's select the Label tab and enable Use Label. Within this tab, we can configure a different label for each state or add a label to or access a label from our label library. By using the label library, we can create a multi-state or multilingual label that once defined can be used within other objects as well. Near the center, we can select a specific label state so that we can modify the various attributes of this label, including font, size, or color. We can also configure our label to be italic or underlined, and even determine if we would like our label to blink on a predefined time interval. Below this, we can change the alignment of our text relative to the object itself, or if your label consists of multiple lines relative to the other lines on display. We can also duplicate these attributes or the label itself to every state, and if necessary, configure our label to move in a specific direction at a certain speed. At the bottom of our entry field, there are two additional options. The first will allow us to preview the font size of our label, while the second option, labeled Tracking, will allow our object to track and maintain the same label position throughout every state. This means that if I move the label within state 0 to a custom position while tracking is enabled, the label within state 1 will move to the same position. And if I move the label within state 1 to a custom position, the label within state 0 will move as well. Now that we are aware of each option within our Label tab, let's create a label for both State 0 and State 1. For this demonstration, I'll label State 0 off and State 1 on. With that complete, it's time to review our last property mentioned within Chapter 9, the Profile tab. Although currently, you'll notice that I don't have a profile tab. And that's because, in order for this tab to be accessible, you must first place your object. Now that I've placed our bitlamp, I'll double click this object to access its properties, and you'll notice that our profile tab is now accessible. Within the profile tab, you can pin this object to its current position so that it cannot be moved directly from the work area. You can also modify its current position by changing the X and Y coordinates. Below the Position group box, you can modify the object size or determine if you would like to keep the current width and height ratio within the Size group box. Now it's important to note that, although many of the properties that we have discussed today are accessible within most objects, every object is different, and some properties that apply to one may not be appropriate or accessible within another. Please consider this when designing your HMIS project. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our channel to check out the latest technical tutorials. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.